happy balram purnima maharaj please bless all of, please bless off all of us maharaj hari krishna panch kaupat roop is charge pindu vai cha patitanam bhavane dio vaishnave bhyo namo namaha om gyan te mirandasya gyanajana salakaya chaksun lita mena tasmay shri gurave namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunyavari Pasyatya Deve Kaine Daisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So here, we are here in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And uh, we are in the European time zone. So, so we get the chance to uh, celebrate Balaram's appearance day with you today. And tomorrow, officially here in this area. Well, thank you for the opportunity to try to make some attempt to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has appeared as Sri Balaram. Please do that as an offering. Hmm? Sorry, Maharaj, there was some disturbance. Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. We can yes, hear Maharaj. Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, I'm going to read one verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, Balaram. I'm going to read three verses, starting with verse, this is Adi Leela, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, and 10. <laughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Rindam Sri Balarana Mughosai Mula Sankar Samana Pancharupa Dari Karena Krishnera Sevana Lord Balaram is the original Sankarsana. He assumes five other forms to serve Lord Krishna. Apane Karena Krishna Lila Ras Sakaye Tristi Lila Karakare Nari Chari Kaya. He himself helps in the pastimes of Lord Krishna and he does the work of creation in four other forms. Verse number 10. Okay. okay. One minute here. Sristiya ka adika sevatanra ajana palam desarupa kari krishnera vividas sevan. He executes the orders of Lord Krishna in the work of creation in the form of Lord Shesha. He serves Krishna in various ways. <laughs> the Prabhupada's purport. According to expert opinion, the Balaram is the chief of the original quadruple forms, is also Sankarsana. Balaram, the first expansion of Krishna, expands himself into five forms. Maha Sankarsana, Karanab Visai, Karbadaksai, Shirodaksai, and Shesh. These five plenary portions are responsible for both the spiritual and material cosmic manifestation. In these five forms, Lord Balaram assists Lord Krishna in his activities. The first form of these four forms are responsible for the cosmic manifestation, whereas Seisha is responsible for personal service to the Lord. Jaisi is called Ananta or unlimited. He assists the personality of Godhead in his unlimited expansions 
by performing an unlimited varieties of service. Sri Balaram is the servant of Godhead who serves Lord Krishna in all affairs of existence and knowledge. Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who is the same servant of Godhead, Balaram performs the same service to Lord Goranga by constant association. I see Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadaha, Sri Vasudha, Lord Krishna. Rajendra Nandana Ye, Sachi Sutu Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo in Yatai. As it's spoken by Srila Maratam Das Thakur, that that same Balaram now appears in this age as Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Uh, and he is as Balaram. Is known as the servitor Godhead. He is Godhead himself, but he is in the role of serving Godhead. Actually, Balaram is Guru Tattva. He is the manifestation where all of the principal acharyas are coming from. In other words, there is Guru Tattva within the uh, Supreme Tattva, or the the uh, highest form of principle of, of Godhead, manifests himself as the Supreme Guru. And all Gurus are actually coming from the Tattva, or from the, uh, the role of Lord Balaram. So we worship Balaram as Guru Tattva also, along with being the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he is servitor Godhead. He plays a particular role. It manifests, as it describes in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, that Krishna expands himself initially into Balaram. There is no difference between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is that Krishna color is like a Tamil crowd or a rain cloud during the monsoon season. It's bluish black in color. We can't compare it to anything in this world, but we try to make some semblance of comparison just to give a little indication of the, the transcendental nature of Krishna's transcendental body which appears in that particular form. Lord Balaram is compared to a white spring cloud. And that is the only difference between the two. But he is known as the immediate and initial expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. Balaram further expands into what is called Chaturbhuha, Vasudev, Sankarsana, Aniruddha, and Prajuna. This is the manifestation of the Vishnu forms that appear within the spiritual world in the Vaikuntha realm. From that expands Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan expands further into the second chapter Bhuha, Vasudeva, Ankarsana, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. And from the second Sankarsana, it expands further into Mahavishnu. And Mahavishnu is the manifestation of the Godhead that brings about the creation. And you can see Balaram's role in facilitating the aspects of both the spiritual world and in the act of creation also. And of course, we also know that from, from Mahavishnu comes Garbhadaksai Vishnu. From Garbhadaksai Vishnu's form comes Lord Brahma. And from Lord Brahma, under the guidance of Lord Krishna, the whole material world starts to manifest during the time for the next creation. 
Uh, this is all explained nicely in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. As we mentioned, Balaram is a, he is Godhead himself. He is worshipped as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He appears along with Krishna in the form of Jagannath and within the, and in, along with the internal energy, Subhadra, they appear in the area of Jagannath Puri in this material world to, for the sake of accepting worship. Uh, Balaram also serves Krishna in different rasas. The word rasa means relationship or spiritual connection. So there are five rasas, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parental affection, and conjugal love. Balaram is so eager to facilitate all of the activities and pastimes of Sri Krishna that he, he expands himself into different forms in each one of these different rasas to particularly serve the Lord in that way. In the rasa of neutrality, he becomes the Lord's clothing. He also becomes the Lord's bed, the Lord's shoes. He is the Lord himself, but he manifests these different paraphernalia just to facilitate Lord Krishna's activities when he appears in the material world. He is the, also the umbrella of the Lord. And sometimes it is also mentioned that he appears as the jewelry upon the body of the Lord. Not all jewelry is Balaram, but some. Is. As is explained, he is the shoes of the Lord also. So that's why, and he's also, we also understand he is the Murdanga. And Balaram manifests or incarnates in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as he expands himself in the form of Lord Nityananda into Nityananda Balaram Murdanga. So you can get a little insight how Lord Balaram facilitates all of the spiritual aspects of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as he appears in his different forms. In servitorship, he finds different ways to serve the Lord. In friendship, he is the uh, older brother of the Lord, and he facilitates their pastimes as they play with their cowherd friends in the groves of Vrindavan. And when he appears in this world, he takes on the same role. In the more, in the uh, rasa of uh, of Vatsayaras, of parental affection, he is the older brother of the Lord. So, therefore, when he when Krishna goes out to play in the pasture grounds or to herd his cows. Balaram is always there to accompany him and also to uh, act as a parent if Krishna is, is in need of any kind of care. He takes care of Krishna also. And the last one is he performs a very secret and very Gupta type of relationship in the Madhurya Ras where he appears as the younger sister of Shimati Radharani, known as Ananga Manjari. We don't too know too much about that manifestation of Balaram, but it's mentioned in the Shastras that he appears as the younger sister of Shimati Radharani to facilitate Krishna's pastimes in the, in the role of Madhurya Ras. So Balaram is multifaceted in his service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, we worship both Lord Balaram and Krishna together, Krishna Balaram, in our temple 
in Sri Vrindavan Dam, the Iskan temple there, which is known as the Krishna Balaram temple. They are the main deities on the altar. As you go and take darshan of the deities on the far left altar, there is Gornitai. On the far right altar is Radha Sham Sundar. And then the center altar is Krishna Balaram. And therefore, Krishna, when Srila Prabhupada opened that temple, he had Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna as the center form of deity. And that, de that temple is known as the Krishna Balaram temple. So that, that is in the area of Raman Reti. And in the mood there is the Sakyaras, because when Krishna and Balaram appear together, they perform their pastimes in the mood of uh, cowherd boys in Vrindavan. Uh, there are many wonderful pastimes of Lord Balaram. When Krishna was growing up in Vrindavan, Balaram was also there. Um, we, when we hear from Srimad Bhagavatam how Krishna appeared in the jail cell of uh, Kamsa. And the prophecy appeared within the realm of the cosmos to tell Kamsa that the eighth son of your Sister Devaki will be the cause of your death. Kamsa, being a very vicious demoniac personality, immediately imprisoned his sister in jail. And he was actually going to kill her, but Vasudev, her husband, actually made a deal with Kamsa that he would present all of the different children to Kamsa. And Kamsa killed six children. When the seventh child was about to be born, Krishna appeared to his to his internal potency, Yoga Maya, and said, I have a, a very difficult service for you. Balaram, the my expansion will appear as the next child of Devaki the seventh child. In order to prevent, prevent Tamsa from causing any disturbance in Balaram, I want you to perform the pastime of transforming, transferring Balaram from the room of Devaki to the room, womb of Rohini. Rohini was one of the other wives of Vasudev, and she was living with Yasoda in Vrindavan at the time. Now, uh, Yoga Maya, the internal potency, when she heard the instruction given to her by Krishna, she was not very, she wasn't feeling unqualified to do this great service. But Krishna said, you do it and I will empower you to carry out this service. And she did. So when Devaki was uh, pregnant for the seventh child, at one time it appeared that Devaki had a miscarriage. And but that actually wasn't a miscarriage. It was it just appeared that way. That was the transforming or transferring of Balaram from the room of Devaki to the room of Rohini at the time. Rohini was also present at the time. It appears that she also had a miscarriage while she was in Vrindavan. So Balaram was safe from Kamsa and therefore he appeared. He is known as the older brother of Krishna and he appeared in Vrindavan before Krishna appeared in Vrindavan actually. And so And Balaram is, uh, his name, Bala, means strength. And Rama means one who takes pleasure. 
for one who gives pleasure, both one who takes pleasure and one who gives pleasure by using strength. But that strength is not physical strength. For Balaram, actually, it appears to be also some extraordinary physical power that he exhibits, but he is the supreme personality of Godhead. So his power is unlimited anyway. But therefore, devotees, when they practice Krishna consciousness, we are very much encouraged to pray to Lord Balaram for, for spiritual strength. Because he is Guru Tattva. He, all the different spiritual masters who come in the line of gurus within the Sampradaya are all manifestations of Nityananda Balaram or Balaram. Therefore, he is Guru Tattva. And we get our spiritual strength by following the instructions of our spiritual master. But particularly, it is encouraged and recommended highly to pray to Lord Balaram for physical strength. And he's very inclined to perform and to give those that particular mercy upon those who sincerely pray for him. One time, so there is there are many, many particular events in the life of Lord Balaram where he was performing activities and assisting Krishna in his pastimes in Vrindavan. There's one particular pastime where um, there was one demon called Takarasura. No, 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 no. Sankarasura. Sank Sankarasura, not Sakuri. Sankarasura. And he um, he had this very valuable gem on his head. He wore it as a, a part of his crown. He was very proud. One time Krishna and Balaram were there with the gopis at the base of one mountain in the Vrindavan area. And they were disassociating with together in a very simplified form of relationship, nothing very, they were just enjoying each other's company. And Sakurashura came and he started to harass the gopis. And he started to pull on the gopis and he started to try to capture the gopis. And Krishna and Balaram are there, and they're thinking, what is this demon doing? It's causing so much disturbance. So Krishna said, you take care of the gopis, Balaram. I'm going to take care of this demon. When the demon realized he was in trouble, he immediately ran. And Krishna pursued him, caught him, and smashed him on his head and killed him with, with one punch. He took that jewel that was there in his turban and came back. And he uh, he wanted to give it to Srimati Radharani. But all the other gopis were there too. So he didn't want the, gopi, the other gopis to feel uh, unhappy that they didn't get the jewel. <laughs> Of course, they all feel happy when Radharani becomes uh, recognized by Krishna. And so he gave the jewel to Balaram and said, you give this jewel to Radharani. But Balaram later gave the jewel to Madhu Mangal, who later gave it to Srimati Radharani. And that was the same jewel that was the Samantaka jewel. And we read about that in the pastimes with Akrura and Satrajit. Now that jewel is a very valuable jewel who used to be able to produce tons of gold and jewels every day just by its presence. And wherever that, that jewel was, 
there would be no pestilence, there would be no famine, there would be nothing inauspicious. This is one particular activity of Lord Balaram. He was in confidence of, with, with Krishna to make sure that Lord, that Shimati Radharani received that jewel. Uh, during the battle of Kurukshetra, Balaram didn't take part in the fighting. Although he was present, he still didn't take part. It's interesting, Balaram is very mysterious in how he does things. Uh, Duryodhana was very much inclined to Balaram. Of course, Duryodhana became the uh, enemy of the Pandavas and tried to destroy the Pandavas. And of course, that was the reason of the battle for Kurukshetra. But Duryodhana was a very skilled fighter with the club. And uh, he had learned his fighting skills from Balaram. Balaram was his actual teacher. So when uh, the battle was uh, going on, because Balaram didn't want to take the side against his student, he remained neutral in the fight. And he didn't want to go against Krishna nor against Duryodhana. He remained neutral in the fight. After the battle of Kurukshetra, when uh, when uh, the Pandavas had become victorious and King Yudhisthira was now meant to be the kingdom, king of the world, the Duryodhana, uh, and Duryodhana towards the end, all his brothers had been killed, but he was the last one left. So there was a fight between Bhima and Duryodhana. And both of them were expert in club fight, fighting with the club. But their expertise were in different categories. Duryodhana was more skillful in the art of fighting. And Bhima was more powerful in the use of clubs. And he had the strength of 10,000 elephants, it says. Towards the end of the battle, there was a fight, a club fight between the two of them, Duryodhana and Balaram. I'm saying Duryodhana and uh, Bhima. And the fighting was going on. Balaram came, and he didn't like what was going on. So the fighting had been going on for many days, and no one could win. So Balaram came and he, he made a petition, stop fighting. He said, Bhima, you are more powerful, but he's more skillful. Therefore, nobody will win. And uh, they didn't listen to Balaram. They looked at Balaram as simply being an intruder. So he became somewhat uh, frustrated, not frustrated, but disappointed that they didn't take any of his advice. Balaram left that area and went on pilgrimage. And he mentions he went on pilgrimage for 20 years. This is also similar when he appeared as Lord Nityananda in the pastimes with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Lord Nityananda was 12 years old, it was arranged for him to leave with one great sadhu, his village, home in Eka Chakra and travel as the assistance of this one sadhu. And he, meant, he meant, mentioned he traveled for 20 years. So Balaram performed the same pastime both in Gaur Leela and in his Leela with Lord Krishna. And his Leela with Lord Krishna, he was traveling in different places. One time he came across the sages at Nami Sharanya. They were about to hold a great sacrifice, and they had just elected uh, Romahar Shansuta to be the presiding guru of this particular assembly. Now, 
this, this ceremony had just completed and Balaram appeared. As soon as Balaram appeared, all of the sages immediately stood up in honor of Lord Balaram and offered beautiful prayers welcoming Lord Balaram, except for Romaharshan Sutta. He didn't even acknowledge Balaram's presence and he remained seated on his exalted seat. Balaram noted that this person, he's there as a presiding guru, but he has no respect for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he's a cheater, he's a pretender. He's just an imitation. So Balaram did something which shocked everybody. <laughs> He's done that before. He took out a blade of grass, or he found a blade of grass. This grass was kusa grass. This grass is a very special grass. This grass appeared on earth when uh, Varahadev picked up the earth from the bottom of the Garbhardakside ocean. And when he uh, was shaking his body to get the water off his body, the hairs on his body fell onto the earth and they grew as kusa grass. If you've seen kusa grass, it's a very blade-like grass, it's sharp. And so Balaram picked up a piece of kusa grass and came right at Romaharshan Sutta and hit him with it and immediately killed him. The stage sages were shocked. They had just elected him as the presiding guru of the assembly. And now Balaram, the Supreme Personality Godhead, has killed him. And they said to Balaram, now what are we going to do? You have killed our presiding guru. And Balaram said, oh, if that's a problem, then I'll bring him back. Oh, no, no, no. No, we don't want you to do anything that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be inclined to do. That's okay. And then uh, the sages spoke and said, actually, it is understood that the son uh, is the representative of the father when the father is no longer present. So his son, Sutta Goswami, was given the position. And you read when you open up the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, the presiding personality over the assembly at Nami Sharanya is Sutta Goswami, the son of Romaharshan's Sutta. So it's interesting. Now, why did Balaram do that? Why did he kill him? Balaram later made a statement. He, he, he says that uh, a person in a dramatic performance will play a particular role illustrating a particular personality, but it's just a drama. He is not that personality. He is more like an actor playing the role of a, a great personality. So in the same way, this Romaharshan Sutta was simply an actor. He had no qualifications to sit on the throne because one who cannot honor or recognize or even or worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot take the position of a spiritual teacher, a spiritual leader, because ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead manifests himself in different forms of himself as the guru to as his representatives. And of those who take that position, become disqualified by not honoring the Supreme Lord, then automatically they are asara. Asara means useless. They have no, no position anywhere. So Balaram made that point. <laughs> Balaram left right after that, and then he continued to go on pilgrimage. He came to the area of Jagannath Puri, and he wanted to go see his worshipful Lord, Lord Jagannath, who was in the temple of Puri at the time. 
But then again, he also knew that he was there also in his deity form as Lord Balaram. So he did not go. <laughs> he did not go because he's already there in his form as Lord Balaram. So he, he passed up for and continued on his pilgrimage for 20 years. And then, of course, he again appeared in Vrindavan later on. Um, Balaram has performed so many different leelas. He is the supreme personality of Godhead. Um, Prabhupada would sometimes uh, question us and say, um, you go to the temple in Krishna Balaram temple, and you see Krishna and Balaram on the altar. And then Prabhupada would ask us, who do you think is more powerful, Krishna or Balaram? And the devotees would give their opinions. Some of them would guess, some would say Balaram, some would say Krishna. And then Prabhupada would get it, give the answer in a less direct way. He'd say, just see, Balaram has his arm and it's resting on the shoulder of Krishna. So actually Krishna is more powerful because Balaram is leaning on Krishna. <laughs> so it's more like a little Leela pastime. Um, It's, it's mentioned that uh, as we perform our devotional service, we are meant to eliminate and remove from our consciousness or from our activities certain anarthas. Anartha means something that's unwanted, something that blocks, something that interferes with our progress in devotional service. And there are many different anarthas. Um, there are, when Krishna kills the different demons in Vrindavan, such as Putana, Bhakatasura, Agasura, and many of the Keshi and Aristasura, these demons represent different anarthas. So we take shelter of Krishna and pray for his mercy and glorify his pastimes of killing these different demons. We can gradually free ourselves from that particular anartha we're represented by that demon of Krishna killed. But it mentions also that there are two demons that Krishna allows Balaram to kill. And that is based on the execution of devotional service. And those two demons are Dainakasura and Palambasura. Because it mentions that one has to make an effort to get rid of these particular types of anarthas by one's endeavor in devotional service. Dainakasura appeared in Vrindavan in the Taliban forest. He was a he was an agent Kamsa who was guarding Kamsa's forest along with his many associate demons. Now he was in the form of a donkey, a jackass. And uh, no one could go into that forest of Taliban. And in that forest, there were many, many tall trees with beautiful, big, sweet tall fruits that were high up on the trees. One day, the, the cowherd boys, the named cowherd boys, came to see Krishna and Balaram. He said, Krishna, Krishna, there's, a, there's this wonderful forest with so many succulent trees and fruits, and we really would like to taste those fruits. Can you get, for, get it for us? And Krishna looked at Balaram, and they all decided to go. So when Balaram came first into the forest, he uh, started to shake some of the trees and grab some of the fruit and started to eat it. Now this demon became alerted that some who's in that forest taking my fruit. So he saw this personality 
and uh, he became very angry, and he ran full throw, full full force at Lord Balaram, and with his hind legs he kicked with all his energy Balaram in the chest. And Balaram didn't want to be disturbed. He was eating one of these fruits, and this demon was disturbing him. So Balaram didn't even pay attention to him. And so this demon decided to do it again. And this time he ran with even greater force and charged at Balaram. And he, when he attempted to kick him, Balaram grabbed him by his hind legs. And it's mentioned that he just whirled him around really fast. He was just spinning him around. And he finally, by spinning this demon around, the demon lost his life by the force of Balaram spinning. And then Balaram threw him up into one of the tall trees. And that tall tree fell and hit another one. And another tree fell. And all the fruits started falling from the trees. And then all of the cowherd boys started running and picking up the fruits. But then there was another problem. The associates of, uh, of uh, Dana Kasura started to come and try to avenge the death of their leader. So they start charging at Krishna and Balaram. And it's a nice scene. You'll see that all of these donkeys were different colors. So Krishna and Balaram were having fun. They were eating fruit with one hand and grabbing the, the demons in the other hand and just throwing them and whirling them around. And, and they were throwing them up in the trees and they were getting stuck in the trees. And describes in the pastime uh, description in the Krishna book that they look like a panoramic sight of different colors, almost like a beautiful rainbow. And then all the cowherd boys said, Jai, Krishna, Balaram, well done, well done. And all the, everybody was happy and the cowherd boys got nice towel fruits. Uh, Dana Kasur represents carrying old baggage from previous lives, represents laziness, lethargy, and uh, just carrying all kinds of old um, sinful activities from previous life. The Balaram, we pray to Lord Balaram to get rid of these Anarthas because only by his mercy and by the execution of your devotional service. Because devotional service really means getting rid of what we don't need. Because the soul by nature is pure. The soul by nature is part of Krishna. But the soul is covered by the material body. And the material body associates with the material energy for many, many lifetimes. And it takes on all of these different material characteristics. Some of them in the mode of goodness. Some of them in the mode of passion. And others in the lowest mode, the de destructive mode of ignorance. So life after life, we carry all of these unwanted things. And then when we come to devotional service, the process is to eliminate them so the soul attains its pure spiritual existence once again. And therefore, we pray to Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram to remove these, but particularly Lord Balaram in the case of uh, getting rid of old baggage from previous lives, laziness and lethargy. Laziness is a very mm, low quality. Bodhis were asking Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, laziness, is that, is that a, is that a, is that a, is that a, uh, a demoniac quality? Prabhupada said, no, it's actually lower than that. <laughs> The laziness is in the mode of ignorance. And nobody likes a lazy person. So when it comes to spiritual life, one has to be always very uh, dynamic in the execution of one's Krishna consciousness. One should be always enthusiastic and determined to execute devotional service. Devotees are very much enthusiastic when it comes to executing devotional service, chanting, reading, associating, and performing different activities. 
especially kirtan devotees find their enthusiasm reaches high levels of uh, attainment in, in kirtan so a devotee is never lazy when the devotee is asked to do a particular service they had their their happy they feel very happy to be given the chance to do the service a lazy person uh, doesn't fit in anywhere either spiritually even materially even in the material world if people are lazy nobody likes them nobody can use them they're, they're ousted they just become just burdens on society they don't contribute to anything and they can't even help themselves so laziness is a very you know, inauspicious quality represented by king of the soul and by the mercy of Lord Balaram and by the efforts one makes in devotional service, one can destroy the demon of Venakasura. Another demon that Balaram killed, there was a particular game that Krishna and Balaram and all the cowherd boys used to play. And it was a competitive game. And they would divide into two groups, Balaram on one side and the other side. And uh, uh, the losers would have to carry the winners on their back. So uh, um, th this demon took the side of Krishna. He actually disguised himself as one of the cowherd boys. One of the cowherd boys stayed home that day. And this demon transformed his form into that cowherd boy and took the side of Krishna. Now Krishna's side's lost and Balaram's side was victorious. So the uh, cowherd boys on Krishna's side had to carry the cowherd boys on Balaram's side. And so this demon put Balaram on his back. Now he was thinking, I'm going to you know, eliminate this personality. So Balaram's just on the back of this cowherd boy. And then all of a sudden, the cowherd boy starts going. And he's going farther and farther away from the cowherd field and going into the woods. Balaram's thinking, where is this, this cowherd boy taking me? Then Balaram realized it's not a cowherd boy. It's a cowherd boy, the demon in disguise of a cowherd boy. So Balaram just took his fist and just punched him on the head. And when he did, this demon turned into his hideous form as a huge like, de demon with copper color eyes and very sharp teeth. When Balaram hit him on the head, his head was smashed and his blood was coming out of his head and the demon died. Haribo. Devotees like when, when uh, the Lord kills demons. We can't kill demons, but because in this age, in the age of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we try to destroy the materially materialistic demeanor or demoniac demeanor through the process of bhakti, especially chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But when Krishna and Balaram were there, they eliminated the demons by killing their bodies. And so this 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 uh, this demon Palambasura was killed. Now Palambasura represents, as is described by the Acharyas, he re represents illicit connection to the opposite sex. And uh, so, therefore, when devotees practice devotional service, this is one of the can be one of the stumbling blocks that devotees encounter wrong or illicit activities with the opposite sex. And that can be a stumbling block and a big one in the process of devotional service. So therefore one has to pray to Lord Balaram and work to get his mercy, chant the holy names of the Lord and very carefully uh, execute devotional service. Yeah. And by the mercy of Balaram, one can free themselves from this tendency, which is a major stumbling block 
And then it's not a stumbling block, it's actually a fall down in devotional service. It's illicit activities with the opposite sex. So um, these two demons, Denakasur and Palambasur, are killed by the mercy of Lord Balaram as described in these pastimes. So these are some activities of Lord Balaram. There are many. We could go on and speak for oh, another couple hours about the pastimes of Lord Balaram. But we already spoke about 55 minutes already. So uh, maybe we can stop here and we can open it up. I know for those of you in the United States, uh, we wish you a very joyous celebration on the appearance of Lord Balaram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Balaram also likes honey. He very much likes honey. I remember when uh, when we would, uh, uh, we were in New Vrindavan in early days, on Balaram's appearance day, we would always offer him a big bowl of honey on that day that Balaram enjoys this uh, called Varuni beverage. It's a beautiful pastime. It's associated with that particular pastime also. Okay, so any questions? comments or anything you would like to add to the glorification of Lord Balaram? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful, very nectarian pastimes of Lord Balaram. And uh, for starting off with the Chaitanya Charitamrita verses, explaining the position of Lord Balaram. Pr Maharaj, there is a question by uh, Sukha Math Sukha Sagri Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, I think this is Sukha Sagari, Mataji. Sukha, okay, yeah. I see now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavat Pranams. Um, such a beautiful class, Maharaj. So many uh, points you gave regarding uh, Lord Balarama, his tattva, his uh, pastimes. I have a couple of questions, Maharaj. One is, uh, you mentioned that uh, Balaram Actually, he takes the form of some of the paraphernalia of Krishna, but not all. I was wondering, so are there any exceptions to that? I mean, why is it mentioned like that? It gets very specific. It's also mentioned in the Chaitanya Chari Dhamrita. Mm -hmm. I think if I can find it, it's in the same chapter here. Um, it mentions the different... Uh, the different manifestations that he appears as. Um, it's in this same chapter. He, um, or I think it might be in the seventh chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, the different manifestations. Let me see here. Um, I'm looking right now. Oh, yeah, I have a bunch of references here. Let me see if I can find it. And, well, I, I know for sure, without finding the verse, I know for sure that he he's the shoes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He is the bedstead of the Lord. He is the umbrella of the Lord. He's the clothing of the Lord. He's also the arti paraphernalia. When we do the arti ceremony to the deities, these are manifestations of Lord Balaram. Not all of the jewelry, but some of the jewelry, he appears as is Balaram. So these are. So yeah. So when you say not all, but some Maharaj, I mean, why is, I mean, if there's any mention of why is there a distinction between not all, but just uh, some of his jewelry, like Lord Balram manifest, because in general, I mean, what we hear is like the whole existence substance on Lord Balaram, like he's the Santini potency. So I was just wondering why aren't there like any exceptions, if any, and 
um, I mean, is there some pastime behind it or? Um, yeah, because, you know, sometimes we don't use the proper jewelry. We just put anything on. <laughs> Somebody gives us a necklace or some cheap thing that, you know, <laughs> something that looks nice, but it's just, it's just, you know, what they call it, costume jewelry. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so not all of it. That's the way it's explained. It doesn't get into the details, but that's how it's understood. Sure, Manaj. My other uh, question was, uh, you'd mentioned that, uh, you know, like when uh, uh, Bhima and Duryodhan were like actually having the uh, fighting match and they wouldn't stop. So Balrama, he got disappointed and he went on a pilgrimage. And, I, and you also mentioned the... Um, you know, the same uh, pastime in Chaitanya Leela, I couldn't uh, quite catch that, Maharaj. I mean, so Lord Nityananda went. Uh, yeah, the Lord Balaram appears again as Lord Nityananda. And uh -huh. when he was living in his village at Eka Chakra, at one time, a very great sadhu appeared in the village. And he uh, went to the home of Hadai Pandit. Hadai Pandit was the father of Lord Nityananda at the time. His name was Nitai. His mother's name was Par... What was it? Padmavati. So he stayed for some time and he was about to leave. Nobody knows the name of this sadhu. Sometimes say people guess who it was. Some say it was the older brother of Lord Nityananda who, I mean, Lord Chaitanya, who was actually the Vishra Rup. Others say others, but no one can give a, a clear, uh, exact statement about that. It's written in that way. And so when he was about to leave, the sadhu, uh, Hadai Pandit, you know, thanked him for coming and, you know, purifying his home, staying there. When he says, is there any anything else that we could offer you? He said, well, actually, I am a sadhu and I am traveling alone. I require assistance. So please give me your son, Nittai. <laughs> this was like a thunderbolt hitting the head of uh, a Dai Pandit, his only beautiful, loving son, who was the sinosaur of everyone in the village. And then uh, he was shocked. <laughs> But Nittai was there, and as soon as he heard that, he just walked right next to the sadhu and stood beside him. Padmavati was there. She didn't know what to say. She was also shocked. But he, being a brahmana, he had promised that whatever the sadhu would ask, he would give. So if you promise a sadhu that you can ask anything from me, be careful. Because if you don't fulfill that wish, you could uh, incur some great difficulties in your life. So he, they left. And uh, after some time, the whole village realized that Nittai was gone. And they all became really alarmed. Oh my God, Nittai is gone. So they all, everyone started to look and they searched the whole area, but they could not find. And so that Nittai, little Nittai, he was 12 years old at the time. He traveled for 20 years and then he met Lord Chaitanya in Navadweep at the age of 32. So it mentions that they... Oh, Lord Chaitanya was at that time 20 and Lord Nityananda was 32 when they met in Navadweep. So he traveled for those 12 years, those 20 years, I'm sorry. And it describes he went to different places also. It doesn't give much detail, but there is a little bit mentioned here and there. But, but he did the same thing when he was... Uh, after the battle of Kurukshetra, when he became disappointed and, and he just left everything. And he just went on pilgrimage for 20 years, visiting many holy places. 
Marat, so during the battle, uh, Balram was there. I thought he had left even before. This was at the very end. I see. Yeah. Dear Duryodhana was still alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, I, I have to go and listen again to the class, Maharaj. So many beautiful points. You, uh, you know, really gave away everything about Balram. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the class. Happy Balram Purnima. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hey Krishna, uh, thank you so much Sukhasagri Mataji for those beautiful questions. Uh, Scarlett Mataji, Hare Krishna, do you have a question? Please go ahead. Uh, you're on mute. Are you able to unmute now Mataji? No, okay. Please try now, okay. No? Yes. yes, thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you for uh, the class. Um, I I have read somewhere that uh, the holy dam is also uh, Balaram. Have I understood it right? Yeah, the whole spiritual world is Balaram. All the Vaikuntha planets are expansions of Lord Balaram. The holy dam is a manifestation of Lord Balaram. The Lord expands him into different forms of himself to facilitate the pastimes, his pastimes in, the, in both in the spiritual and material world. You have to understand one principle. Everything comes from the Lord. Everything. And the Lord expands himself in different forms of himself, or he creates different energies and those energies expand and also manifest in different ways. And therefore, you have both the spiritual and material creation. So when you actually understand everything completely, you understand there's nothing outside of God. Everything is within God. It is two, there's only two things in existence. There is God and there's God's energy. That's all. We are the energy of God. Everything is the energy of God. And God is there in his different forms. So ultimately, everything is everything in existence in the material world and everything manifested in the spiritual world is all the energy of God. Everything. There's nothing separate. Separate is a consciousness that is, is called a, uh, what's the word? It's like it's like thinking that your hand is separate than from you. Your hand is connected to you, and therefore it works to to serve you. Everything is meant to serve the supreme person. Everything got here because everything is coming from the supreme Lord. Everything, both material and spiritual. So, in the case of Balaram, he is uh, he is that tattva which expands all of Krishna's uh, everything that Krishna needs to perform his activities both in the spiritual and material worlds. So we worship Lord Balaram as the supreme personality of Godhead who is called servitor Godhead. The guru is also sometimes called servitor Godhead, but he's not the same as Balaram. But guru comes from the tattva of Balaram, or he comes from the tattva of Srimati Radharani. That's mentioned also in the very beginning of the Anchalila. And so when you say, is the Dham uh, a manifestation of Balaram? Yeah. It is. But don't get confused with the idea of expansion. Expansion doesn't mean something begins at a certain time. On the spiritual realm, there is no such thing as beginning and end. 
Everything exists within its pure spiritual essence eternally. But for the sake of understanding, we talk about expansion. That's an inconceivable uh, principle. You can't conceive that. How something can come from something and at the same time be eternal at the same time. But that's the nature of spirit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yes. Her Krishna Gauri Mataji has another question. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Perfect Mamal obeisances. Oh, Gurishya Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very, very wonderful class and very beautiful points. Uh, and it's very nice to hear about uh, Lord Balaram on his appearance day and meditate upon his pastimes. Thank you so much for uh, the um, Krishna Balaram pastime in Vrindavan. See, uh, the... Um, it's like you know our iskon temple is the you know main deities for us like krishna balaram deities and if we meditate upon them today it's very nice maharaj thank you so much and it's a great blessing for us that you came on the call i was like worried what will happen i message that Maharaj will come late today and please start late and you you are there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great surprise for me. It's a very nice surprise. <laughs> Krishna made it exciting. We, we, we just flew from Croatia to, to Switzerland and the plane, the plane, the flight was delayed about an hour. And I was thinking, I might not make it in time for the class. But we got here just about 20 minutes before the class started. Very good, very nice. See, all Lord Balram's mercy. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was refreshing. We'll be celebrating his appearance day here in Europe tomorrow. Yeah, I think we are celebrating in U.S. today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Nice to hear from you. Hope everything is okay. Yes, Thanks so much, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. One quick question. Was, so, Maharaj, you were talking about how when Lord Balram went to Jagannath Puri Dham, he, uh, he did not enter the temple um, because he is Lord, Jag uh, he's Lord Balram himself. Uh, so, how was it that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were you know, constantly they were associating and they were going. <laughs> Balaram didn't want to interfere with his pilgrimage. He didn't want to stay there and get worshipped. So he, he decided to, he decided not to stop. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, sorry about that. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. It it's was. It's just mentioned in the Krishna book that he was already there, so he didn't decide not to go again. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's his prerogative. He can do whatever he likes. Okay, thank you, dear devotees, for joining. Uh, Please I... forgive me. Please forgive me. There is a question in the chat. Yes, not that yet. Yes, uh, okay. So, um, mm, uh, okay, so there is a question from Achita Priya Arundhati Mataji. Uh, 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Can I please know how to come out of laziness, be self-motivated, and more enthusiastic to practice professional service? Please bless us, Maharaj, to have these qualities. Well, if you don't, you're going to miss the goal of life. That's all. <laughs> You've been handed a great gift. This gift is the opportunity to solve all of your problems eternally and completely by purifying your existence and coming back to Krishna in the spiritual world. This is not something that is easily attained, just to have that opportunity. And even, even very few people who, who come in contact with very, very many people who come in contact with devotional service can't see the value of it, can't understand it. But those who do, they know, we take advantage of it. They know it's the greatest thing, the greatest gift that one can achieve, the opportunity to serve the Supreme Lord. And we're coming back to our original position of eternality, uh, knowledge, and unlimited happiness. And so if you have a, if somebody gives you a, a large treasure and you just put it in your under your bed or in your bank account and you don't use it it's like not even having it Great. this treasure of devotional service is both rare and the goal of all of all activities in life and in order to uh, take advantage of it we have to be enthusiastic <laughs> You have to understand that this is what I've been looking for for millions of births. <laughs> Freedom from birth, death, disease, and old age, and associating with the Supreme Lord and loving devotional service. And there's no question about being lazy. Being la lazy is like, is like suicide. Thank but you. if you want to achieve that uh, that enthusiasm, you have to associate with people who are enthusiastic. And that is the best way to awaken that enthusiasm is through devotional association. And if you can't get much association, then just be enthusiastic. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you gotta you may have it's it's a greater effort to become enthusiastic when you don't have the association, but you can do it. But you have to work a lot harder. <laughs> so when you have the association, it's nice. Sweet. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very true. We need to make sure that we use this opportunity. It is a very rare opportunity that we are given. Uh, thank Extremely you, dear. Rare. Extremely rare. Yes, Maharaj. Hey, Krishna, dear devotees, if there are no questions, uh, we'd like to end the call here. Mancha kalpata rubhya cha kripa sindhu bhya eva cha patitana patitana pavani pyo vaishnava pyo namo namo nanta koti vaishnava jai 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 koti vakhi jai jai thank you very much jai